Well, ladies and gentlemen, you knew it was coming. A comparison between this shiny, fast, new GTR and my regular old normal GTR. Now, if you're not very bright, you might be wondering why we're doing this comparison. After all, these cars are separated by 25 years, 269 horsepower, 197 pound-feet of torque, and a lot of technology. But there are three major reasons why I wanted to compare these cars. Reason number one, these cars share the same lineage, the same heritage, and I wanted to see if anything about my old GTR was still discernible in the new one. Reason number two, I wanted to see how much Japanese performance cars have changed in the last 25 years. And reason number three, I really wanted to have a GTR press car for a week. We're going to start by comparing the acceleration differences between my Skyline, which has 276 horsepower, and the new one, which has 545. First up, my car. And the GTR. Ready? Oh my god, 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 oh my god! <laughs> now let's talk braking. Once again, my car will go first. And the GTR. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! And now, let's take a look at the handling. Once again, my car will go first. And the GTR. God, oh my 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 god! Now let's compare the interior of these two cars. In my car, things are pretty normal. You've got a normal center control stack, you've got a normal dashboard, you've got normal seats, and a normal gauge cluster. Really, there's nothing all that unique about it. But in the new one... Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm just kidding. But this car is tremendously advanced compared to my old GTR. Compare my old GTR to any Japanese car of its day and it seems fairly normal. But this thing is positively futuristic. You have a screen that measures your cornering Gs. You have a huge red starter button. These thickly bolstered seats. These huge shift paddles. This bizarre shift lever. You even have these three buttons that control the transmission, the suspension, and the traction control. In my old one, I have a boost gauge and a, and a clock. The exteriors are pretty different too. Do you see a family resemblance? Neither do I. The new GTR has these giant lights that reach back into the body and intimidate everyone in their scope. Mine just has these lights. The new GTR has these giant front fenders and this huge gaping hole in them. Mine just has these normal fenders. The new GTR has this sweeping angled side profile that was probably sculpted after months of grueling design in a laboratory wind tunnel. Mine is flat, but I can put a model car on the roof and it won't roll off. And then there are the rear ends. The new GTR has this big, bulky, supercar style rear end with these giant taillights and these huge exhausts that make it certain that you're looking at something special. My car just kind of looks like someone put a rear wing on an Impala. And don't even get me started on the engines. Yes, these two cars technically share something in the sense that they both have twin turbocharged six cylinders with all-wheel drive. But that's like saying that an elephant technically shares something with an easel because they both have four legs. Think of it this way, this car has double the power of this one. There is absolutely 
absolutely nothing in common between my old GTR and the new one. The new GTR is a giant, city-crushing, rage-filled Godzilla, and my car is merely an iguana. But just because the new GTR is monstrously more monstrous than my old one doesn't take away anything from either of these two cars. It's like an old Porsche 911 versus a new one. The old one is fun to drive through the corners. It doesn't have enough power to get you into serious trouble. And there's not enough technology to make your head spin. But the new one is fast, it's fun, it's crazy to drive on a track or up a highway on-ramp. Both of these cars are amazing vehicles. They just don't really share anything, except for a very famous badge on the back. Thank mm -hmm. you.